first one is that is an approval of the regular, uh, open the regular meeting with approval of the minutes for the regular meeting June 11th, 2014, the workshop meeting June the 25th, 2014. <coughs> Make a motion that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting June 11th, 2014, workshop meeting June 25th, 2014. Second. As stated. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mary Carl Wall. Commissioner Henderson. Yes. Commissioner Capper. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Vice Mayor Branch. Yes. Mayor Adams. Yes. Thanks for ratification of the bills for May, June, and July 2014. Make a motion that we ratify the bills as presented for May, June, and July of 2014. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Commissioner Henderson. Yes. Commissioner Capper. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. 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 First, uh, for the commission reports, I'd like to say I think July the 4th went off great. Uh, the fireworks display was really neat. I thought this year they did an excellent job. Uh, beach cleanup for, and I'd like to compliment our guys. They were there the next morning, and I took a walk on the beach. It really, really looked, really looked good. We had a few of the tent frames still left on the beach that had to be cut up. But uh, probably cleaned up the debris and the fireworks. Really looked good. Other thing I want to bring up, there's been a, that's coming together here lately is we're having some pillows turn 65. And uh, looking at the insurance and what we've talked about, uh, we're looking at uh, quite a savings uh, for the, uh, for, the camp, for the town. And I would, uh, uh, both Valerie from Valerie Insurance is here. And Bert, if you don't mind stepping sure. up and, and uh, over to us. Okay, hi, I'm uh, Bert Valerie, Valerie Insurance. Uh, we're located down in uh, Indian Rocks Beach. And we represent about 50 counties, school boards, uh, cities around the state with their health insurance, and then the transition into Medicare, and that's what we do here. We have your group health insurance, and then as the folks turn 65, show you another way to save money, which is the transition into Medicare. Okay, if you go to the second page, I've got four boxes there, the A, B, C, D, and these are the four parts of Medicare. Um, the A and B are what are on your Medicare card. When you turn 65, you go on Medicare, and you get this Medicare card in the mail, the red, white, and blue card, okay? The Medicare A, we all get for free. Now, uh, nothing's free from the government. What it is is you've worked for more than 10 years, so if you got out of college at 20, by the time you're 30, you've got the Medicare A paid for when you turn 65. But the Medicare B, you start paying for when you go on Medicare itself, either at 65 or if you uh, early, had a lady today, early disability, age 52, she went on at 52. So that's when you start paying for the B. Uh, everyone in America pays the same premium. This year it's 104.90. They're actually going to take 105 out of your Social Security check to pay for it. Okay, but at the A and the B, this does not pay the whole bill, so you pick up a Medicare supplement. That's down in the C. All right, so that's like your the health insurance that you have. So you combine the A and B with the Medicare supplement, and that's your health insurance package that you present any doctor or hospital and they pay the whole bill. And then D is a drug plan that we give you as well. So those are the, the four items. And there's a cost with the B, the C, and the D. All right, what happened here is, Bert turned 65 several years ago. We did exactly that, switched him over to the three, but he's only been submitting the bills for the C and the D not for the B. And so you have to be on the B in order to go on Medicare. You cannot buy the Medicare supplements uh, without being on the, on the B. So it's part and parcel of the whole deal. You need to have the three of them. So it would be the 105, then the cost of the C, and then the, and then the drug plan. So what we're proposing is that for, as your employees turn 65, you cover all three of those items if they're going to continue to work. Because the alternative would be, go to the next page, and look down there, I've got them all yellowed in. I'm showing the 60 to 64 premium for male, 
You see, that's EE means employee male, and then the EE female at age 15. Then as they turn 65, you're looking at $1,204 a month, okay? <laughs> I mean, obviously, we don't want to do that. Or you're looking for the female at uh, 971. So this year, we've got two males turning uh, 65. We've got one already on, and we'll have one female later in the year turning 65. So the proposal is instead of doing that, we get rid of that, and we go over the combination we just talked about. The Medicare supplements are going to be 183.75. So the package will be, take a look at the next page, the Medicare Part B for everybody, 105. The Medicare supplement, now Bert's all, Bert is the top one, okay, that's there. He's already been in this for a number of years, so his premium is just a little bit higher, 192. That's the Medicare supplement. The Part D drug plans, there are 32 plans in our state. They are really tied into the specific drugs that you're taking. So we have to analyze what drug each of these seniors are taking to give them the proper plan. Like I'm in a plan that only costs $12 a month. It's a lousy plan, but I don't take any drugs. So no sense in my buying the Cadillac if I can get it for 12 bucks. But that's not the norm. Normally people are taking drugs, so it's more appropriate that the premium for the drug plan is gonna be 35, 40, $45 a month. So I just put in here on an average, I put a question mark and $40 a month. I think Bert said his was 41. So if, if he was a typical case, you'd see a total premium for all three of those items of 337 versus leaving them on the, count on the city's plan at 1204. I mean, this should be a no-brainer, okay? All right, so that's what we're proposing. Now, the second problem is that we've had Bert on this for seven years, and he's never submitted the Part B premium of the 105. So, I mean, I'm only suggesting this. You guys got to decide what you all want to do. But I would establish a rule that you're going to pay for all three things since they have to be on it to get the other two. You can't get this package without being on all three. And that you go ahead and reimburse Bird for what uh, he has paid himself uh, for, the, for the seven years at the 105. And then from this point forward, you just go forward that you're paying all three items for each of the uh, employees while they're working. When they leave, then it becomes their responsibility. So you're replacing that 1204 with the 337 or with the two new ones, they'll be a little bit less uh, 328. That's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Yes. How long have we known this? How long have we known this? Uh, you've had the three items for forever. I mean, you have to be on, we all look old enough to be on Medicare. You know you're paying for Part B. It's just that he hasn't submitted the bills for it. It's very nice of you not to tell us how long ago he became 65. <laughs> <laughs> we all probably noticed. But, and we could have pulled out some of our own A and B cards, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm just curious as to, if we've known this all along, why is it just coming up now? I didn't realize that Bert wasn't submitting the 105. I mean, because it's part of the cost but he was only submitting the cost of the two insurances. And I, I can see that happening. It's not, it's not really an insurance, it's a government item, Part B of Medicare. And I could see how a person would, would, would miss that. And then that's what happened, he did miss it. But as we have these other three people coming up, uh, I presented it to Mary uh, several months ago. Uh, and I said, geez, we should be paying for the 105 as well. I mean, they have to be on it in order to do the other two. So that's where we came in with, gee, I bet Bert's not, and then we looked at him, sure enough. Um, so, so it's your recommendation to us that we go back to the day turning 65? <laughs> well, he, you know, he, you've, had the, you've had the benefit, yes, you've had the benefit of not paying $1,200 a month and instead paying uh, 200 and something. <sighs> he, we're all and has, he, has he been paying the 1200 before? No, no, he, no, he's been paying the, this, you have been reimbursing him for the, Medicare supplement plan and the drug plan, but not for the 105 for Medicare. Okay. So the 105 Medicare, we, would, we will be doing it. And you're recommending we go back retroactively to the day he was 65? Because really we should have been doing that, yeah. yeah. Well, we should have been, but for some reason we weren't. I'll take the blame for it. I mean, so else <laughs> the decision is yours, uh, Lee. Yeah, I'm yeah, not, I understand. I'm, I understand, I'm just, but I'm just trying to... Yes. I want to make sure that... Yeah, the, the, the thing is, you have to be on that. I mean, he has no choice. He has to be on the, the B in order to get the Medicare supplement and the drug plans. You, you cannot go on to Medicare without being on the B. Uh, every American must be on the B. And the government will... So what you're saying is yeah. you're, you'll be covered for all four, A, B, C, and D. Yes. 
The A you get for free, the B is the 105, the, the C is the gap plan, and the D is the drug plan. And that whole package change? here is 300 something. Does it change? Yes, it does. Uh, uh, a few years ago, I was paying 96.20 uh, for the B. Now it's, and then, I, then it went up to 115. And now it's, what, what, in, the, in the old days, it depended on when your birthday was and when you came. There were people paying 96, 110, 115. And a few years ago, the government said, we're going to squash that. Everyone's going to pay the same thing. So this year, we are all paying the, the 10490, regardless of age, regardless of when you turn 65, regardless of when you went on, we, we all pay that. I would expect it to go up. Okay, it's been pretty nominal, obviously. It was 96 for a long time. Okay. So they need to, somebody needs to send a voucher to us or to the town treasurer so that she pays it or pays it, reimburses the individual, or how is that going to work? Well, right now, I think they are submitting their... Uh, yeah, I, submit, I submit every month, yeah. For, yeah. I've been submitting for, uh, for B and... Uh, what have I been submitting yeah. for? You can say for the gap plan and the drugs. C and D. Right. That's uh, what I've been submitting for for five years. What first sheet you had here, the sample rates, uh, at, uh, at my age bracket, 241.50, and this time it was... At night it was 248. That's right. for the three plans, or the three plus the B. Are you looking at this? What's yeah. the video? Yeah, that's the that's just the the C, the gap plan. So you, you're in this third grouping. That would be your premium for just the gap plan. The fourth grouping. The fourth grouping. Four year spread. Okay. Tom, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a four year spread. Can't you narrow it a little? <laughs> Yeah, so you're paying to be a little higher, Tom. But, okay. I, I would like to say, too, that uh, along in this, if and the town would con continue with the division and dinner, and I'll take Gary, as we talked about in Term 65, going on to it. Gary's premium right now is $1,020.71 the town pays a month. The total for that he would pay going on the list uh, or that the town would pay for him going on to this plan would be $382 a month, a savings of $638.71. To me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I just have a problem with how come... I don't know. That's all. Mm -hmm. Really, the, the thing is, he doesn't get a bill for that. And I can see that happening. See, he gets a bill for the Medicare supplement because it's an insurance policy. And you get a bill for the Part D because it's an insurance policy. But the D, we all, I mean, everybody in New Orleans, when they turn 65, regardless of what they do, the government's going to take 105 out of their Social Security check. So you're not getting a bill. I get people to argue with me that say I'm not even paying for their Part uh, B of Medicare. And I say, of course you are. Yeah, they don't see it. It's coming out of their Social Security check. So it's hard for him to submit a bill because he's not getting one. We vote on that tonight to do that, or? Sure. Sure. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, change Gary's. What was Gary? We would do the for everybody turning 65. Well, they just a policy. You know, establish a policy. Establish a policy. Not just get out and name anybody. Okay, and reimburse uh, the mayor for the funds that he was paid for the seven years. That a motion? That's a motion. I'll second that. Motion and second in discussion. Anyone in the call of the Commissioner Henderson? Yes. Commissioner Kaplan? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Vice Mayor Branch? Yes. Mayor Adams? Yes. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, Mayor. I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, moving forward, who chooses the plan and the provider when you do your supplemental insurance? Well, well uh, different providers charge different fees for the same plan. I, I think I can answer that, and then if Brett wants to come back up here. We go through Brett Valerie. He researches and comes up with the cheapest one. Okay. That's how that works. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. That's all I have for my report, Vice Mayor Branch. Okay, on the police report, uh, 
<coughs> under traffic citations for Indian Shores, they were minus 91 this past month. So they took a real deep dip there, and we went only nine down. Of course, the towns are built different, and that makes a lot of difference in the thing. Uh, parking citations, uh, they were up plus 20, and we were up only four. So the word is getting out through our people that uh, we mean it when we say stop or slow down or don't park here, and that's good. Uh, the next thing, the ordinance violations, uh, they're up two in Indian Shores and up only one in Reddington Shores. Call for service, minus 76 in Indian Shores, and they are plus 23 in Reddington Shores. And these are put on the bulletin board, and there's one thing that disturbed me, and I had several people question me about burglaries. What type of burglaries are we having? So being that uh, our police captain is here, I would like uh, to ask him if he'd give us a few minutes and explain uh, where most of these burglaries occur at and whatever you're going to do about it. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. <laughs> In response to, to Commissioner Branch's concerns and, and probably concerns from throughout the town, both towns, in fact, we do have burglaries occasionally. Um, burglaries can either be residential, they can be commercial, or they can be vehicles and vessels, or the four categories. Um, the most common, to be totally honest, in both towns is vehicle burglaries. A lot of times they'll walk down the street at 3 in the morning just looking for open car doors. The car doors open, they'll reach in, take change, GPSs, cell phones, anything of value. So always lock your car. <clears throat> uh, commercial burglaries or business burglaries, which almost always happen when the business is closed exclusively and for obvious reasons. We don't have many in either town. Uh, residential burglaries be your house, your dwelling. It, it's um, oftentimes forced entry. It's usually when you're gone. I can't remember a, a burglary in the last three or four years in either town where someone's been home and it like a home invasion is what you would call it. Someone breaks in your home while you're there. It's very, very rare. It's really as rare throughout Pinellas County except in a few enclaves. <clears throat> the, the biggest thing is lock your values. Lock your car, lock your house. And I hate to say it, but even lock your doors while you're at home. That way, if someone does come by looking for an opportunity, you don't present one for them and make it easy for them. That's the key to it. Most burglaries, are, are crimes of opportunity. Someone sees something, no one's around, and they can take it and they can go undisclosed and they they do just that. Um, I don't think we'll ever prevent it completely if it's gonna happen. And it can be as innocuous as, as leaving a lawn tool out on the side of your house and somebody's walking by and you know, I can pawn that, they'll grab it. And no one's around to see them. And you know, a month later you discover it's gone and you call us and by all means do call us if you discover your property's been taken. And along those lines, I can't stress to you enough, if you have valuables, inventory of your valuables, and anything that's serialized, write down that serial number, because those are the, the, the things that develop leads for us to, to not only get your, your belongings back, but also to trace down the person who took them and pawned them or sold them to somebody else. So, so anything that you have that's valuable, take a few minutes and create a log or a, create a computer file, take a picture of it. Uh, expensive jewelry. I can't tell you how, how important it is to take a picture of it. So when we go scouring these pawn shops after something does happen to, to try to locate someone's belongings and get them back, it's, it's very, very helpful. It, it really is the, a lot of times the, the one thing that, that creates a break and, and like I said, gets us to arrest the person and get your things back for you. But just be vigilant. Always be looking out for anything that's out of the ordinary people that don't belong in your neighborhood. And when you see that, call us. No matter, night or day, call us 24 hours a day. We'll be happy. It may be nothing. It may be a, a county meter reader who just happened to walk through your yard. But don't take a chance. Call us. Let us determine. And uh, if by all means, if they don't belong there or if they're up to no good, then we'll deal with that as well. And if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to stop by or call me. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Thank you. 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 Thank
Any questions? Right. Thank you very much, sir. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President. Commissioner Capper. Uh, total permits for June 2014 uh, was 61. We had one new single family home and several uh, miscellaneous permits. Total of $29,341.51. And uh, Indian Shores, $5,792. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kaffer. Commissioner Henderson. Well, we are presently getting bids for resurfacing the tennis court, which is much, much, much needed. Um, the Parks and Rec have another meeting, which is next Wednesday, July 16th at 6.30 here at Town Hall. Anybody is welcome to attend. We're happy to have you. Um, I don't know if everybody's noticed the uh, additional recycle bins on the beach. Those have been well used, especially this past weekend, and I have gone out and checked, and I think they're as used if as much as the regular trash cans, if not more, which is great. We don't want to put all that stuff in the landfill, so that's a great thing. Um, several people have contacted me about the swim buoys that are missing out in the water, and they have been ordered and should be installed the end of the, by the end of this month. Is that correct, Mayor? Uh, hopefully by the end of this month. Okay, so those, that's being taken care of. And I just want to definitely thank Captain Rawson and his crew for helping enforce the newly uh, <laughs> adopted ordinance for parking. You have done a, an amazing job, and we thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Henderson. Commissioner Holmes. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, fire services for the period, <coughs> it was one non-emergency fire response during the time period with an average response time of seven minutes. There was one emergency fire response time during the period with an average response time of seven minutes and 42 seconds. Emergency medical services were eight non-emergency responses for the time period with an average response time of six minutes and 37 seconds. And there were 21 emergency responses for the time period with an average response time of five minutes and 38 seconds. In emergency management uh, yesterday morning, uh, Pinellas County <coughs> Waste Management, Solid Waste Management, uh, put on a department, put on a uh, four-hour presentation of disaster debris management for coastal communities at the auditorium in the town of Indian Shores uh, Town Hall, and uh, which was an excellent facility to host it. And uh, they did a great job hosting it, and uh, they'd be commended for their setup and everything else arrangements, and the cookies, uh, one over big. The, uh, it was, it, disaster debris management for coastal communities is a massive, massive problem and a massive job to deal with and contend with. This, we're talking about response to the storm here, after the storm hits. And this, you've got a big, big problem with it. And it takes a lot of study and a lot of listening to learn all about it. And, and uh, so we had uh, several people there. We had. Uh, Steve Jordan there, we had Gary and, and Brad, and we had Mary and myself. Uh, and we I, we all were making sure we all stayed awake. So, and we got a lot out of it, I'm sure. And then this morning, uh, Mary and I attended the orientation and tour of the new emergency operations center, Pinellas County Operations Center, which is located in the new building right near the Sheriff's Department on uh, Seminole, I'm sorry, yeah, Seminole and uh, Almonton. And it's a big facility. It's built to withstand a class five hurricane or disaster. And uh, walking around it, the tour during the tour this morning, I would think it looked like it would be a nice place to be during a class five. <laughs> so they've, they've got a really great facility, state of the art, and it's going to be a really great facility. And we're going to enjoy learning more from the people there and taking more classes and tours of it and the whole operation of it. And, and they also discussed, of course, how they're going to help us here during uh, setting up things and other tools that, that may be available to us down the road so that we can get a better feel for it. Anyway, the other thing that I, uh, in the process of it, is forming a new floodplain management plan committee. The committee will cover also the local mitigation strategy and the 
the uh, community uh, rating system as well. And I'd like the Board of Commissioners to approve the following persons as members to that committee. Uh, Lana Wishamer, Steve Andrews, Christy Herrick, Merv Dickerson, and Lee Holmes. And I'd like to, to uh, nominate those people and ask that the commission approve them. I'll second that. No, you make the motion. Uh, I'll make the motion. Mm -hmm. If you made the motion. Yes. I'll second it. Motion and second in discussion. Hearing none, Mary Carl Will. Commissioner Henderson? Yes. Commissioner Tapper? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Vice Mayor Branch? Yes. Mayor Adams? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> first, uh, in the old business, is the first reading of ordinance 14-03, allowing bites on the beach and no glass on the beach. Attorney Rubenstein. Ordinance number 14-03, an ordinance of the Town Commission of the Town of Reddington Shores, Florida, pertaining to beaches, amending Chapter 59 of the Code of the Town of Reddington Shores, Florida, pertaining to beaches, amending Section 59-1 of the Code of the Town of Reddington Shores, Florida, pertaining to the operation of vehicles on beaches, removing the prohibition of the operation of bicycles on the beaches, adding a new Article 4, prohibition of glass containers on beaches, providing for the inclusion of such amended ordinance in the code of the Town of Reddington Shores, Florida, providing an effective date. Make a motion we adopt ordinance number 14-03 on first reading. Second. Motion and a second in discussion. Any other comment? Commissioner Henderson? Yes. Commissioner Tapper? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Vice Mayor Branch? Yes. Mayor Adams? Yes. Uh, next new business, acceptance of the fiscal year 2012-2013 annual financial report. Uh, Mr. Christina, if I said that right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> My name is Richard Christina. I'm the audit partner in charge of the town of Weddington Shores annual audit. Um, uh, this evening we're presenting the uh, report itself to the, to the commission. Uh, I just wanted, uh, and it's a 93 page report, I'm not going to sit here and read it to you uh, at <laughs> the mayor's request. Uh, the, uh, I, I will touch on some highlights. Think that in the accounting and auditing world, things are changing almost on a daily basis. And one of the big reasons is that the federal government is getting involved. The Securities Exchange Commission and other regulatory bodies are looking at uh, trying to eventually, I guess, uh, be the ones to set accounting and auditing standards. And since you know how well they've done in everything else, we're trying to keep them from doing that. Uh, i just point out a few things. The, uh, the new report does contain the, uh, a transmittal letter, uh, and that's, that's a message. Uh, uh, to the readers about the, uh, and to the commission, about the, uh, I guess, a, a, a brief overview of the state of affairs of the town, which uh, continue to be very good. Uh, before I get into the uh, auditor's report, I do want to say that part of the job we do is we do test internal controls, and we do identify and test against uh, Florida statutes and the board's policies and fiscal policies, which you do have them. And finally, our third standard is good business practice. In other words, given the same facts and circumstances, what would a prudent person do? And uh, in, in following those guidelines, we basically found what we refer to as no control deficiencies, no significant deficiencies, and no material weaknesses. And what does that have to do uh, with what we're reporting here? What, it, what we're saying is that People did what they were supposed to, and we didn't find any, any evidence of people doing things they were not supposed to, to the extent that it would actually affect a number in this report, in other words, in this statement, that could mislead the board in making a decision. Uh, so knowing that, and moving forward on page two, we have the independent auditor's report. And this is the first change that's made on the auditing clarity auditing standards. As you know, last year, our report was two pages long. This year it's three pages long, but we're not saying anything more. 
uh, and that's part of clarity. The Audit Standards Executive Committee in New York felt that uh, in order to add clarity, they needed to add words, but they didn't really change anything. Uh, we, one of the things we did this past year was when this came out, we hired a professor of uh, English from the University of South Florida, and she got up at the blackboard and she diagrammed this report, which was quite good and quite lengthy. Her opinion as a, an English professor was that it, it's not good English. Hmm. Management discussion and analysis is required. It's a required supplementary information that, uh, that is prepared by Bunyan. And it basically is a brief overview of the financial results for the year. Uh, the, the data that's used in this presentation uh, comes specifically from the financial reports, the, uh, the, the balance sheets and the statements of income and expense that are contained herein, and uh, with a highlight of things, why things changed. And that's the big issue. If there was a change or uh, an increase or decrease, the, the reason for that increase or decrease is provided in this presentation. And that's according to the standard as well. And that's something that we've had for the last several years. The basic statements on page 11, and here again, this is where we start running into some of the changes that the Governmental Accounting Standards Board imposed on us this year. And right off the top, you see this at the top of that page, it says Statement of Net Position. Now, in the past, we used to call this a balance sheet. But one of the other things that they did, if you look down under liabilities, there's uh, total liabilities there, but the, uh, at the halfway point in the, on the page, you see an item called Deferred Inflows of Resources. Well, in English, what that is are the occupational licenses that the town collected in advance of their due. So that, in the past, that has been reported as a liability. But under the new GASB standards, the reason they moved it was because liabilities, by definition, signify that you're going to pay someone something. But this isn't a liability, it's money you collected, so you're not going to pay anybody anything. So the, confu the board got confused. So they said, well, let's create a new item in the accounting formula. So now we have assets, we have deferred uh, outflows, we have liabilities, deferred inflows, and finally net position because because of the deferral, we couldn't call it fund balance or net assets. We had to give it a new name. Otherwise, it would confuse people. Suffice to say, it's still a little confusing. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, we, this, this is the reason for some of these wording changes. Uh, and we all need to get used to them. Uh, 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 Quite frankly, in Pinellas County, what we've noticed is that the majority of time that we have this new category of deferral is in the area of occupational licenses. And I, the city of Tarpon Springs has them. Um, that's what most cities are involved with. Uh, Clearwater has got some derivatives uh, in the investment program. Uh, that is also part of a deferral. But uh, uh, this, this town is much more conservative in this, their investment approaches. So there's uh, no danger of that. But suffice to say, we have a uh, total net position of 15 million in our governmental activities. Our business type, which are, is our sewer fund, is 2,715 for a total of 18,331,000. Now keep in mind, this is the balance sheet that uh, is converted to full accrual. In this presentation, we have our fixed assets. We have our land, we have our uh, uh, depreciation expense, and we have our indebtedness. Thus, the, uh, this, this is the effort to make the town look like IBM. Uh, I think we've talked about this before. It's full accrual. It's not how the board runs the town. It is not in accordance with the, uh, the state requirements on uh, the 20065 for the budgetary presentation. And on page 12, is the presentation of the revenues and expenditures under this full accrual method. And as you can see, the first line there on that page <coughs> on the far left side, it starts with expenses. Uh, and, and as you know, most of the other revenue and expense statements start with revenues, and then you subtract the expenses, and then you get net revenues or net expenses. Uh, they've done it a little backwards, but here again, what we end up with is a net 
changes in that position of some $337,000 in our governmental activities. Even governmental activities basically being defined as the general fund and the capital improvements fund. On a full accrual basis, the town had a good year. Um, so I guess if you were a stock company, there would be a, uh, perhaps a dividend paid b because you, you had a bottom line that would be subject to tax, and that's, uh, that's good, quite frankly. Um, you have to remember that the reason that these two pages were created in the first place was to satisfy the needs of the money lenders, the people in New York who were lending money to cities across the country. They said that our cash or near cash governmental base, budget base, was not understandable. Uh, interesting to note that we are continuing to get calls from banks saying that they don't understand these two pages either, so I don't know that they've solved the problem. Pages 13, which is now our governmental funds and our balance sheet, and as you can see, this, this, this is the town's balance sheet for the year. It was quite good. Our total governmental funds are 6280000 Our total fund balances are 6208000 which basically is, uh, if you will, what's available to the commission. The, 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 this town is quite strong financially, all right? So um, and that's uh, caused by a lot of things. Uh, first of all, conservatism, and I understand that, um, and taking advantage of uh, financial things when they come up. So uh, suffice to say that the, uh, besides having uh, a good internal control policy, your financial results are very, very good. Uh, pages, page 14, <coughs> uh, that's the presentation on the governmental basis, uh, which ties to your, your budget presentation, which you'll see in a second. Uh, we have uh, $2 million, $2,167,000 in revenue, a million seven twenty nine in total expenditures, and after a transfer out of $150,000 to our capital improvements, we ended up with $288,000 surplus for the year. And uh, if we turn to page 16, and you'll see the budget actual to see how that compared to our budget. And as you see there under total revenues, we collected more than we thought we would collect by $140,000. And we expended less than we thought we would expend by $147,000. So the total of those two gets to our surplus of 288,000. So all in all, uh, we were in conformity with our budget. We had under public safety we had a little overage, but our general government was uh, a positive variance. And those are the two numbers if you're looking for uh, significant fluctuations that uh, that we dealt with this year. Uh, so the, and I understand that somebody can say that, well, the reason that we had a positive variance is because the commission didn't get a chance to um, implement a program that had been budgeted. And to my knowledge, that we didn't have anything big that uh, was passed by. So I, this, this is a result of, you, you didn't, you got done the things you wanted to get done. Page 17 and 18 of the presentation, excuse me, of your uh, enterprise fund, the sewer fund. And uh, page 19 is the st statement of revenues and expenses for the sewer fund. And again, our net change in that position or our net income was a positive 60572 So that's... Uh, uh, again, a, a good result. We, uh, we collected more than we spent, and, uh, and that resulted in an increase in cash held by the fund. Just a quick flip in the back. The budget actual for the sewer fund is back on page 60 because the, the commission does budget for that fund. And as you can see, <clears throat> on our revenues, we collected uh, $5,200 more than we thought we would. And we expended $87,000 less than we thought we would. So our operating income was a positive, uh, in positive uh, variance of $92,000, which when you read it all the way down, it gets us to the $60,572. So this is a smaller fund, admittedly. 
but the, uh, the budgetary controls were still in, in force, and we, we, we saw no problems with that. I'm not going to read the footnotes to you. Um, I'd just like to point out a couple of items for, the, for the information. On page 27, <coughs> we tried to write a footnote that would be understandable regarding this deferral issue uh, in the middle of the page there, on page 27, it's note one. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to the, uh, to the board uh, to, uh, to read over that, but in a nutshell, what, what we're doing here is announcing that our balance sheet has changed and that the, uh, there's a new accountability been introduced by the GASB board. for informational purposes only. Uh, the statistical section, which is uh, back on page 65 of the report, and as you can see, it's, it's, it runs about 15 pages in length. The Auditor General of the State of Florida does not require that the, the town have a statistical section. Uh, the town has uh, been putting this together over the last several years, and this is what makes your report uh, referred to as a comprehensive annual financial report instead of a, an annual financial report. So there, there, there is additional work that goes into this that, uh, that uh, Mary certainly does, um, but I think it provides analytical information for anyone that wants to use it. This kind of information uh, makes, when you borrow money, it makes the, the bank's life easier because now you've presented, uh, quite frankly, we've got six years in so far, we're going to build this to a 10-year table. Mm -hmm. So when we're finished, every one of these tables will have 10 years worth of data. So if someone wants to analyze, uh, has the town been collecting more revenues than expenses, or whatever question they might have, this kind of information would uh, certainly save you and save Mary uh, time from pulling it together because it's already been done for them. And uh, we, commend, we commend the board for uh, pursuing and maintaining these, these schedules. And so we're open to any questions. I know there's, the, the, we've, we've talked about a lot of new things this evening. Any questions? I make a motion that we adopt the Town Ready Insurance Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for the fiscal year ended September 30, 2013 is presented. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mary Carlo. Commissioner Henderson? Yes. Commissioner Kappa? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Vice Mayor Branch? Yes. Mayor Adams? Yes. Thank you very much. For Thank you, Mr. Brady. Next uh, order of business is uh, for the approved uh, proposed millage and add the loan tax uh, for the fiscal year 2014-2015. Proposed millage is uh, 2.0 uh, and for the add loan tax. I make a motion that we adopt the the uh, ad valorem tax and the proposed millage rate of 2.0000 in accordance with the fiscal year 2013-2014 tentative budget. I'll second that. Motion and a second in discussion. Hearing on the account Commissioner Henderson? Yes. Commissioner Capper? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Vice Mayor Branch? Yes. Mayor Adams? Yes. Last on the new business is the uh, recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Site Plan Review, 176 Ken Lee Avenue. Uh, that 
I'm going to say the planning and zoning board, they recommended that the acceptance of the site plan as shown to the commission, uh, and I believe it's 100 percent to, to accept the site plan. Now we need to know who we accept the uh, uh, planning zoning recommendation. Well, I can make a motion to we have uh, approved the site plan. Planning and zoning recommendation. Planning and zoning recommendation. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? And then we'll call the roll. Commissioner Henderson? Yes. Commissioner Kaffer? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Here. Vice Mayor Branch? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Here. Yes. <laughs> uh, public comments? Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Maureen Ahern, and the reason for my visit to your lovely town tonight is just to introduce myself. I am running for the Pinellas County School Board, District 6, and I just thought it's a good idea to visit all the towns that the District 6 encompasses, and Weddington Shores is one of them. So just a little bit of background. Um, I was born here, not born here, <laughs> I was raised here, um, and uh, went to public schools, uh, USF. Um, my background is in journalism, a reporter. I actually covered um, this town many, many years ago with the Beacon Leader B as an editor, and moved over to the St. Petersburg Times. Um, I'm married to um, State Representative Larry Ahern. I'm sure many, some of you know him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's all I wanted to do, is just come out here and to introduce myself. Um, congratulations on your um, exemplary fiscal report um, on, on being good uh, um, stewards of the tax dollars. And if there's any questions of you or anybody in the audience, I'll, I'll be around here uh, for the duration of the meeting. But um, thank you for the opportunity to just come and introduce myself to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hearing none, the next uh, workshop meeting is July 30, 2014 at 7 p.m. Regular meeting August 13, 2014 at 7 p.m. With that, this meeting is adjourned. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you.